Uh, hello guys, it's Eden here, and this is the first video in my Unit 28 website production video series. So the reason for this series is because a few people in my lecture group on the BTEC Level 3 Extenders Diploma in IT course I expressed that they were having difficulties with this unit and would like a little bit of help with it. So I'm making these videos to hopefully point people in the right direction and help them out because why not, I'm a nice person. So uh, let's start by talking a little, about, a little bit about what HTML actually is. So, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it's a bit like a programming language, but it's not. So if you think about it, say for example in Unit 6 we're doing about Delphi and, you know, C perhaps and Java. Now, there you've got a list of instructions that tells the computer what to do, but with HTML it's not, it's just a kind of, it's a bit of a, well yeah, it's a markup, but it's not a code, it's not executed, it's just displayed in a special way. So as it says here, the website is sent from a web server to the user in HTML format. And um, the browser just looks at that HTML markup and it just goes, oh okay, so I'll show that on the screen in whatever way and we'll move on to that in a moment. Um, so it's not actually code, it's not actually executed, it's just displayed in a posh way, basically. Okay, so there's different versions of HTML, and HTML5 is the latest revision of the HTML specification from W3.org. Um, and also, an important thing to remember is that HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, all the code you do in HTML, or Markup even, all it is is it's the content of the website. So it's not how it's actually laid out on the page, or what colours things should be in, or where they should be on the page, etc. It's just the raw content. So that's where CSS comes in. So here we go. CSS documents are incorporated into HTML files, and it tells the user's website browser how to lay out the information on their screen. It's not part of HTML itself, but it's separate, but it's used in conjunction with it. And I'm not aware if it's... I'm pretty sure it isn't used anywhere but HTML. But technically, it isn't the same thing, it's just an additional part. So HTML5 specifies that all styling of HTML pages should be done via CSS. So we shouldn't be using any center tags, and we'll move on to tags in a moment. So basically, any stuff to do with layout, don't use HTML for it. Don't do any HTML file, always do it in a separate CSS file. Okay, so here we go. This is interesting. Um, if you look here, we've got YouTube on the left, as you would maybe recognise it. Um, yes, I am signed into my account, so you can see my beautiful face there. Um, but on the left, we've got YouTube with CSS. And on the right, it's just pure HTML. There is no CSS applies to this. This is just for HTML content. There's no styling. So you see this avatar here of me. Uh, just HTML, it's aligned to the left, it's not, and nothing's aligned to the right at all, it's just all collapsed to the left in a big mess. So that's because CSS is basically the bones of the website, it's, it's, you know, it's the skeleton of the website that says, okay, so put this here, put that there, and um, this should be that colour, that should be this colour, this should look like this. It's, there is none of that, it's just a, it's like somebody's pukes for website up, it's, you know, it's just, so I've deliberately stripped out the CSS here just to show you what CSS is responsible for, what HTML is responsible for. Okay, so there we go. Hopefully that'll give you a bit of a better idea. So, yeah, if you've ever seen a page like this, I'm sure you've seen a page like this before. That's because there is no CSS available. Something's gone wrong. Okay. So in HTML, there are several tags, and all of these tags behave in different ways and be used for different parts of a website. So, for example, if we want is to write a paragraph of text, like a welcome to this page, here's some information about us, that would be a paragraph. And for that, we would use a P tag. So, you see, for example, here, how it's surrounded by the two P tags. But this one's got a slash. So, obviously, the content here, if I just get the uh, pen out or the highlighter. So, this here is the text that we want to display. But then... What you've got is you've got um, you've got like the p tags here and here that are basically surrounding it, they're encasing it, and that's because this text is within 
this element and you will quite often you will almost always uh, you know this, you can't really you can't do a website without having what you call nested elements so if it would be maybe an overall container with bits of text in it and um, those would be called child elements so um, I'm not really explaining this very well sorry but no, I don't think about this again. So you've got your P tag, that means paragraph, okay? And this is a paragraph of text. So for that, we use a P tag. So always, you see there's a slash here, that means it's the end of the paragraph tag. But the last paragraph tag that was opened, that's the end of it. Okay, so that's denoted by a slash. And that's the same for all tags, but it's just the P bit of it changes. So it might be image, it might be B for bold. It might be I for italics, you know, it could be anything, it could be div, it's basically just a, a div is basically just, we'll get onto that in a moment, but it's basically just a block. Okay, so that block of code there, that specific line of code is known as an element when it's on the page, which sort of makes sense because it's like an element of the website. Okay, so all HTML tags must be closed before the end of the page. You can't have one of these and not have the closing one corresponding to it. Okay, fantastic. So, HTML tags can have additional properties associated with them. So if you look here, it's just P. So triangle bracket P, close triangle bracket. But we can have between the P and the close triangle bracket, we can have additional information that tells it, you know, it gives more information about the element. Okay, so, you know, certain HTML elements can also be both open and closed on a single line. Like this, you see there is no um, other square bracket here or another one with slash image. Because it's, you can do it like this with some stuff. So if, because an image has got no content within it, it's all defined here. So the path to your image, which is ing, by the way, is defined here. So this tells it where to get the image. There's no text within my image required, so you just close it like that. Now, if you're not sure about that, because I've not explained it very well, just let me know, but I'm just trying to help people out, really. Right, okay. So, image SRC. So, this is a property of that tag, and it's basically saying the source of the images, and then it's pointing to um, the image folder. We'll get onto file structure later on. And then within that folder, slash, um, it's a file called logo.png. And also, the HTML specification states that all image elements must have a corresponding alt um, property that basically just says, if the image isn't available, we'll show this text instead. So you might show the name of your website if it's the logo, but I'm just going to call it, I'm just going to have it as logo because it's just an example. Okay. So you might also see sometimes, you know, you've got SRC and alt. You might sometimes see tags that also have width and height equals, but um, that's kind of been, that responsibility has kind of been handed over to CSS in recent years, and yes, it's still okay to put width equals, height equals, but I wouldn't recommend it because the idea of CSS is, or my view on it, is that all the content should just be kept in HTML, and all of the styling, all of it, should be given to CSS, you shouldn't have any styling in your HTML as far as that's how I think of it, but it's it's okay too, but I've got a feeling that that'll be phased out over you know coming years. Okay, so um, as I've put here, and not only for me, Dreamweaver, which is what we use on campus, generates code using the old height and width properties, and I just wish we'd use CSS, but anyway, that's just personal to me. Okay. So the cool thing about CSS, in my opinion, is that the rules within your CSS file can apply to a selection of elements, or only a specific element. So CSS is actually a very powerful tool. And um, so to style a HTML element of CSS, you would use the following CSS rule. So each CSS thing, CSS looks different to HTML, because it's a different thing, but each rule would look something like this. So you've got the um, selector here, which in this case is just the type of tag you want to style. Open squiggly bracket, and then within it, you've got how you want to style it, and then close squiggly bracket. And then in your next line, you might have something else, and then how you want to style that, something else, how you want to style that. And um, these things are called CSS properties, font size, 
and then this is the value you've given to that property and then this P here is the element, so the selector. So there are loads of properties amongst colour and font size. So you know there's more than just colour and font size and we'll cover those later on in the series. And also don't forget you see it how it says colour, that's the American spelling. So colour with a U, which is as far as I'm concerned the correct way. It, you can't do it, it won't work. So your website just won't work if you put a U. It'll just your colour just won't do anything. So on the previous slides we had P as our selector here, as our selector, and uh, it selects every single P element in our document. So this property here was of applies to this here if we used that CSS code on this document. So this text would have been made a red in size 20. Um, so that's just worth bearing in mind. But uh, remember how I said that we can apply it to a bunch of things or only specific things. So to apply it to specific things, we use an ID selector, which it's dead easy to remember. An ID, you know, each thing has a unique ID. You can only use it once. Only one thing can have an ID that is that. And then to apply styling to, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So maybe the example I'm going to use in the next slide is a footer where you've got three columns on the bottom, uh, you would use a class because it would select each class and um, it would select every one of them and there's not just one column. Okay, so the first task when using an ID selector is to set an ID on that element in your HTML file that you wish to apply the style into. This tells CSS what it's looking for. It basically says, okay, you know, so you set in CSS, you set your ID, well, you set your selector, but then in the HTML, you've got to have a corresponding hook. Okay, so I'm um, aware that this video is going on a little bit too long, but I mean, if you're paying attention still, then that's good because obviously you've got you're a motivated student, and that is fantastic to see. Um, so, sorry, I'm just trying to think where I'm up to now. Okay, so you might assign an ID of there's only one of me. Um, and you can't have any spaces in this ID and also it should always be lowercase everything you write in HTML with, it, with a few exceptions such as the word hello because you actually want it to be shown as having a capital H. You do it in lowercase just you know just assume a lowercase unless it's obviously got to be uppercase and then um, this is in our HTML so the idea is there's only one of me so in the CSS document we need to grab that, we need to grab into it and say, you. Um, so in the CSS document, we would write this, hash means you get into something that's ID, and then there's only one of me, and then whatever you apply. So the class selector is similar, except when we use a dot, um, or a period even, as you would call it, um, rather than a hash, and it can apply to more than one thing. So the example is just as this, you have several columns, as I said, and this applies to each one of these. So as you can see, I set the width for thirty-three percent. Which, if you have three columns, that will have your overall width for ninety-nine percent, which is about right. You know, if you're going to have three columns on the bottom of a website page. So that's it for my presentation. Which um, guess what that means? It means it's the end of a video, and it means that in the next one, we're actually going to be doing some websites development. So how exciting! Thank you for watching, and I hope that that was able to guide you and help you in quite a few ways. If not, then just leave a comment or if you know me in person, just speak to me or email me and um, I will do my best to guide you. Thanks.